Hello, good day, and welcome to Go on the Run. And today, we are going to make sure that all you have a Kubernetes cluster that is installed and running and ready for us to continue with the next part, which is going to be able to run our application within Kubernetes. And for this, I'm not going to spend any time, as a, just as so far, I haven't really talked anything about Kubernetes. Um, you just have to trust me, what we're going to do is just go straight to installation. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to get a Kubernetes cluster installed. Now, if we're going to be using Kubernetes, we need a Kubernetes cluster, and that's what we're going to do today, is install one. Um, we have two options. We can use the Kubernetes.com bundle with Docker Desktop if you're using Docker Desktop, Desktop like me here on my Mac. Or we can install Minikube is one of the many Kubernetes distribution for the desktop. There's Kine, there's K0S, K3S, but we're going to use Minikube. And with the installation of Minikube, you don't have to have Docker desktop. So this might be like, let's say you're on Linux where you have Docker the server, but you do not have Docker desktop. In that case, we'll install Minikube for Linux. And you can install Minikube for Windows and Mac, and I'll install Minikube for my Mac also. Well, I have Minikube already installed for my Mac, but I'll show you the process. So let's jump in. So what is Kubernetes? Well, it's a lot. And so we're gonna learn Kubernetes slowly, and we're not gonna spend tr time trying right now to digest all of it because that would mean to spend a lot of time describing what Kubernetes is and so on. And I'd rather take a different approach now in terms of getting us to do a few hands-on things. And then as we go along, we explain the different parts that we're interacting with instead of trying to understand the entire big picture for right now. And so here I am at the Kubernetes.io website. So if you're welcome to go there. You can click on Learn the Kubernetes Basic. Um, of course, there's documentation. The Learn Kubernetes Basic actually take you through, um, you know, telling you basically what Kubernetes is and telling you how you can set up a cluster and deploy an application out. So it's sort of like a tutorial. Um, the other approach you can do is just go to the documentation. And the Learn Basics is actually part of the documentation. But if you go to documentation here, you can see understanding Kubernetes. And this tell you what Kubernetes is and the many components of Kubernetes. And so you should definitely take a look and read at least what Kubernetes is. I'm not going to really go into it right now, but if you are curious, definitely I think you should do that. And I'm even curious. If you're doing this, you're curious about Kubernetes, so you should read that. In terms of what the components are, feel free to read those, read that too. But you can see in terms of trying out Kubernetes, they talk here about Minikube. Um, for us, we're going to be using like a scale on Kubernetes that we can run on our laptop and desktop without doing the full blown installation. So if you follow these links here that says how to install kubectl, which is the command line, um, Kubernetes command line application, allows you to talk to your Kubernetes cluster and all that stuff. And so I would recommend that you go ahead and do that. I have mine installed here and it's pretty, straightforward and was pretty easy to, to get going. Um, I use Brew to install mine. Um, so you see, if you scroll along here, you can see Brew install Kubernetes CTL, kubectl. You might hear people say um, kubectl, um, but either way, kubectl, kubectl. If you are on like Linux, then you can of course um, install kubectl, um, by following the documentation here. And here, if this worked for you and you do not see this problem here, then go ahead and run the next command, which installs kubectl or kubectl. That's if you do not see this problem. But if all that is in place and you still get in this, well, I would say this. There is a way when you install Minikube to get the kubectl command. So I'm going to assume at this point you have kubectl installed. Again, if you cannot get kubectl installed, don't worry. There's a way that you can still be able to access your Kubernetes cluster using Minikube. So now let's talk about installing Minikube. Now kubectl by itself doesn't give you Kubernetes. It's just the means by which you can connect to a Kubernetes cluster and 
you know, create your pods and all that stuff. Just trust me, just accept what I'm saying. I'm not going to explain too much right now, but it's a way to interact with your cluster, regardless of whether the cluster is locally on the machine or somewhere on the network or somewhere on the internet, wherever. That's still the network, by the way. But yes, it's just a way to interact with your, your cluster. So if I do not have a Kubernetes cluster running and I run the kubectl command, I wouldn't be able to do too much in terms of being able to create the resources. Now, there's a configuration file, again, which I'll, I'm going to ignore for now. And it's in your home directory. And usually it's a hidden file. And so for me, it's going to be, let's do cat, that cube, and config. And this is what my config file sort of looks like. Um, and basically, it's basically saying that, oh, I have several clusters. And it names the cluster I can connect to. You'll see one says Docker Desktop. And if I had um, Minikube cluster up, it would be updated to connect to my Minikube cluster. But we'll get to that later. Let's start off with um, getting a Kubernetes cluster. What I've talked about so far is about installing kubectl command. But if you have Docker installed and you're using it on Mac and Windows, you should have the Docker Desktop. And as you can see, my Docker Desktop here is running. Now with Docker Desktop running, if you go to Preferences, you'll see that oh, there's a Kubernetes um, section here. If you click this, you can say Enable Kubernetes. And if you just click that button, um, it's going to say, oh, Apply and Restart. And you can do that, and it's going to tell you it needs to install Kubernetes. It's take a few minutes, and you can hit that button, and it's going to download Install Kubernetes for you. You don't have to do anything else. But now you can see Kubernetes is completed and it's running. If I go back to this, it should say Kubernetes is running. Now, I'm going to assume that if you have Docker Desktop, you have Kubernetes now running. That's it. That's your Kubernetes cluster. We'll see how to access it in a minute. Now, for people who either do not have Docker Desktop or even if they have Docker Desktop, still want to use a not a Kubernetes cluster, Let's install Minikube. So for me to do that, I'm going to turn off my Docker desktop, Kubernetes. So I'm going to apply and restart. Stop my Docker, um, my Kubernetes that's installed by Docker. And I'm going to install Minikube. So how do you install Minikube? So let's go back to um, documentation here. And you can see Minikube. Hello, Minikube. And if you click on this and you go to Minikube Start here, you'll see that you can install Minikube for Linux, Mac, or Windows. So let's say I start with Linux. I'll click Linux. I don't want to do the binary disk download, but you can if you want to. I'm going to do a Debian package again. I'm going to try my luck with the Debian package. And I'm going to run this command. Now I run this command. I'll switch back here to my Linux terminal, and I'm going to run this command. So now I run the command install Minikube, and it's installed successfully. Now I'm going to start my Minikube. Notice all Minikube starts successfully. I can then run some test command. So if you look, you see there's this test command here called kubectl get pod. Now, remember what I said. If you successfully install kubectl, it's going to be able to connect to this Minikube cluster because at the end of Minikube starting, you'll see a line that says your kubectl configuration was updated so it can talk to Minikube. So this command should work. This minus a just simply means all pods. Again, we're going to talk about the commands later, but this means kubectl, get me the pods. What is a pod? A pod is just a group of containers. We know what a container is. A lot, all the pods from now are going to be related to what 
Kubernetes needs to have run it. Now, if you did not get kubectl command installed successfully, so what you would do instead is you would run this command, kubectl minikube kubectl as the subcommand. And so now kubectl is going to run. Well, they show you here, what you can do is create an alias. And if you create an alias for kubectl, is make it look like if you, it makes it look like if you have a command called kubectl. So every time you type kubectl, it really means minikube kubectl dash dash. And so now you should be able to go ahead and run your kubectl commands like this. From now on, I'm going to assume that oh, you have a Kubernetes cluster, cluster up and you have kubectl whether it was installed by itself or it's an alias. I'm just not going to make the distinction going forward because at this point, you should be able to run kubectl get pot. Now, what if you are on a Mac and you want minikube? No problem. Just click on Mac. And then again, you could do the binary distribution or you could do homebrew. And this is all it calls for, for you to install minikube for the Mac. And follow the links again if you have problems on link any previous version you might have and relink it and of course you click start i'm not going to click start because this is the exact same output as when i run start for the linux cluster so you do not i don't need to show you that and of course if you have windows you'll go through and do the same thing on windows um, i don't have windows so i can't show you that okay so now we have a running main, um, Kubernetes cluster either through our Docker desktop or because we have installed Minikube and we've clicked start and started it. So now I'll end the video here, but in the very next video, I'll continue to show you how we can then run our containers in Kubernetes using Kubernetes concept of a pod, which is just how you group a bunch of containers, a set of containers together. Now, if you reached the end of this video and you like what you saw and how I went through this material, please consider being a subscriber if you're not already a subscriber. And if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for your support and patience. And don't forget to thumbs up and like this video. And of course, leave a comment saying whether you, um, there's something you'd like to see or you know how things can be improved or just saying thank you. So I appreciate that too. All right, take care, stay safe, and see you in the next video.